תחנת השוואים, לא מי חוזרת. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Uh, hi, I'm Yannis. Uh, this is joint work with Georgos Pildjuras. Today I'm going to talk about gradient descent, and we will see how techniques from uh, dynamical systems can be useful to analyze the the average behavior, the behavior of uh, gradient descent, and in general prove theorems in optimization. So the outline, I'll, uh, I'll give you some basic definitions. Then I'll talk about our main result and some proof sketch, give some examples, and uh, talk about previous and future work. So given a smooth function, uh, you want to solve the unconstrained minimization problem. Uh, the typical way to go is to use um, gradient descent, the equations are here. Uh, alpha is some constant that uh, doesn't depend on your point xk. And uh, this is exactly a discrete uh, time dynamical system. Um, this is not a basically a heuristic because uh, under some assumptions we have some guarantees. So if uh, the gradient of your function f is ellipsis with some constant l and alpha is is uh, uh, the step size alpha is small enough, uh, gradient descent converges uh, to fixed points. Uh, a fixed point of a dynamical system is a point that uh, remains invariant under the, under the update rule of the dynamical system. So in this case, the fixed points are exactly the critical points of uh, function f. So there exists a, a folklore lemma which says that f is decreasing uh, along the dynamics of gradient descent. So basically, f is a Lyapunov function of this uh, discrete time dynamical system. And uh, this can, gi can give you guarantees about convergence, uh, but setwise convergence to fixed points, um, meaning that your dynamics converge to a set which is a set of fixed points, but doesn't have to converge to a specific point. So uh, if your function f is convex, then you have a global minimum, then you have convergence to the minimizer. <laughs> but what happens if f is non-convex? In this case, you have uh, multiple local optima. And uh, this is just my statement, but I believe you believe that too. Uh, the best you can hope for is convergence to some uh, local minimum. And this is what we are going to show uh, in this talk. So I'm giving you some definitions here. What is a critical point? It's a point that uh, turns the gradient of f to be 0. An isolated critical point is a point so that there exists a neighborhood in, in, in that point, And this is the unique critical point in that neighborhood. A saddle point is a critical point which is not a local optimum. Uh, a strictly saddle has the assumption that the Hessian of f has minimum mega value which is less than zero. And then we have the definition of forward or positively invariant set with respect to some function h, which is just if you apply your function h to that set, then the image is a subset of the original set. So recently, Lee Simovic, Jordan, and Recht proved this very nice theorem. It says the following, that if you have a, a function f which is smooth um, and is globally ellipsis, then the probability that, uh, that the gradient descent converges to a strict saddle point is 0. Uh, a probability measure has to be absolutely continuous with respect to Lebesgue measure in, uh, in Rn. Um, and uh, by an, an easy union bound argument, you can show that gradient descent uh, with probability 0, gradient descent converges uh, to, to strictly saddle points if they are isolated. And uh, you can do a union bound argument because if the strictly saddle points are isolated, then they are countably many at most, finite or countably many. So you can use a union bound argument. 
So, uh, our main result is this one with Yorgos. Uh, we showed that if you have a set S which is open and convex, and your function F is smooth enough in that set, and the, sec and the second derivative is bounded, then if the step size is small enough, uh, the set of initial conditions so that uh, gradient descent converges uh, to strictly saddle points uh, has Lebesgue measure zero. So again, if you have a, a probability measure which is absolutely continuous with respect to Lebesgue measure, uh, you have the same uh, essentially result as in Li et al. Uh, and then an easy corollary which appeared in both papers, is that if uh, gradient descent converges point-wise to, to some point, uh, then uh, you can have a probability one argument to converge to local optima, local minimizers. Uh, so our theorem essentially generalizes the Li et al. <coughs> result in two ways. First of all, we get rid of the, isolate, the assumption of the isolated critical points. Uh, this is important because in many uh, problems, like you have symmetries, and symmetries induce uh, continuums of fixed points, continuums of critical points. So in some sense, uh, we can get rid of this assumption. And the other assumption is that you don't have globally <coughs> the global ellipse condition. Uh, basically think that the third degree polynomials they don't satisfy the global ellipse condition. So the, the proof steps, essentially, the, the steps of the proof are three. First of all, you have to show convergence uh, to fixed points, the setwise convergence. This has been done already. This is a folklore thing. Um, the second thing you have to prove is that the update rule of your dynamics is a diffeomorphism. And this can be, can be shown via eigenvalue analysis. And the third step is to use techniques from dynamical systems, basically something that's called center stable manifold theorem, along with uh, Lindel of Lemma, to, to prove the, the measure zero, essentially, argument. Um, I will skip this slide just uh, to say that uh, the definition of a diffeomorphism, and this is needed for the to use the center stable manifold theorem. Basically, what is the center stable manifold theorem? It says that if you have a, a, a dynamical system and the update rule is a diffeomorphism, if you look at the fixed point, the neighborhood of a fixed point, then the first order approximation suffice to understand the behavior of the dynamical system. And basically, it says that all the initial conditions in that neighborhood that converge to the fixed point are lie in a set whose dimension typically is given by the number of the eigenvalues that are um, at most one. So in some sense, to show this third step of our proof, all you need to do is look all the critical points, the strictly saddle points, take the union of them, and then essentially find the countable subcover of these balls. Um, and this is due to the Lindel of the lemma. And then to get all the initial conditions so that you converge to strictly saddle points, you just get uh, the pre-images. And these pre-images, essentially, uh, all the measure zero sets remain measure zero. And now you can take a union bound because you have countable many balls uh, <coughs> compared to the previous. Uh, so here is a, an example. The, the black line here is a continuum of fixed points. Uh, our theorem can be applied here, and we can show that the set of initial conditions in R3 so that gradients and converge to minimizer to converge to, to the black line has measure zero. This is also another example, four degree polynomial. Uh, these are some references. Basically, I'm done. So. A question where the next speaker is, uh, while the next speaker is uh, setting up.
Thank you.